My name is Enrique Lehnemann. I'm professor of medieval German literature and linguistics. And when Simon Kemp asked colleagues in modern languages to address an A-level text based on a point of grammar, I immediately thought of forms of address, which is an area which is a challenge and puzzle for most of our uh, German students. So I always teach historical linguistics approach to forms of address as last session in the second year before they go on their year abroad. Because understanding the power structure of Siezen and Duzen, the formal and the informal form of address in German, is key to understanding uh, German society. And it's also key for understanding uh, German literature, which expresses a lot through dialogue in drama that is based on different uh, forms of formality. So I'm going to take uh, the text Der Besuch der alten Dame, written by Friedrich Dürrenmatt in the 1950s, as a parable of how uh, power and money can corrupt to take you through uh, decoding some of the intricacies of dialogue in this drama. Before we go into three short extracts from the play, I want to take you, as I would do my second year students of uh, German, through the historic stages of how the forms of address have developed in German. So we have right from the start of German literature different levels of address. So this is a 9th century conversation guide to uh, German uh, written down by a French language uh, speaker who noted the Latin equivalents. You can see that he was or she was French because they dropped their H's. So the first um, conversational phrase uh, they noted down was, What quitten hier, Herra? What do you, Lord, say? And this was um, year is the second person plural, because German originally had, like French, the vouvoyer, or actually as English had originally the you being the second person plural, as formal um, equivalent of address the second person, not the third person as it is nowadays. And um, by having uh, the Hera as form of address, it becomes clear this is something that is used to distinguish nobility and clergy being addressed. While in the second example, chorus to Nara, uh, listen, you fool, um, you can uh, express much more direct an imperative if you use the singular uh, form. And um, of course, you can also curse better uh, in the singular. So, Hundes um, Ars in Dine Naso uses uh, the second person singular. I won't go into what actually this um, curse means, leave it to your imagination, um, but we'll immediately go to the next stage in the development where um, a clear caste system for uh, whom to address in the formal manner was developed. So, uh, and in a way, it's the system that is still in place in the 21st century in, in Germany. So this example is from a courtly text, Wolfram von Eschenbach's Parzival, uh, where at the dramatic showdown at the end of uh, the Romans, the two brothers, um, Feire Fitz, the older on the left-hand side, and uh, Parzival um, uh, fight a duel before they actually uh, realize that they are half brothers. And um, Feire Fitz, uh, the older one, immediately uh, addresses Parzival 
es du and ask him, uh, du sollt nicht mehrere irzen mich. You shouldn't any longer call me by the formal ihr. Since wir hätten beide doch einen Vater, since we both had one uh, father. Um, Parzival refuses uh, to use the du, uh, to uh, address him duzenliche, uh, and brings forward two arguments. One is uh, that the older brother um, is the older one, the elder, and um, also that he is the one that is rich. The Bruder über Reichheit gelichet wohl dem Baruke sich. So he is as uh, rich as an oriental um, Baruch. And uh, so he refuses to um, use uh, the informal uh, address. And um, the system from Middle High German gets more and more complicated. In the 18th century, you have kind of five levels of formality whom to address uh, how in a courtly setting. This is then reduced in the 19th, late 19th century to the dual system that is in place in modern German, namely the third person um, plural Z um, as formal address and the second person singular as the consistently um, kept form for familiarity, intimacy, family. And um, so the formal form of address encapsulates several um, layers of meaning. It is uh, what distinguishes the upper class from the uh, lower class. Um, so you have the working class um, or union um, do, and uh, while you have the courtly uh, um, nobility, upper class, nouveau riche, uh, Z. And um, so that is a vertical structure, but also um, there is the horizontal structure of the closer the nucleus family is, um, the more often you use the do, the further away, um, distant acquaintances you use uh, the z. And these two forms also align uh, to two different forms of drama. So um, in comedy, the stock characters who use the curses and um, the jokes, they use do among each other, while in tragedy um, you mark the distance uh, from the um, elevated characters who, ex who are, uh, qua definition, the only ones who can exper experience tragedy by using uh, the Z form, both among themselves and uh, being addressed by Z from the lower classes. And uh, Dürrenmatt subtitles his drama as Tragische Komödie. So from the beginning, he has two systems of expectations in a dramatic um, development clashing with each other. And he makes good use of that in juxtaposing scenes of intimacy with do and scenes of distance with z. So, um, and you have the cast list, um, which starts uh, with a multimillionaire uh, who is actually risen up from the sphere of the do where she was um, when she was a girl in the little town and then the jilted um, person had to leave the town in disgrace, but rising uh, through um, marriage to the super rich. 
while the town has experienced uh, the opposite development from a middle class, um, moderately prosperous place um, where her lover um, married the shopkeeper to establish himself, uh, and they have fallen down on hard times, as it turns out, because she has bought up all of uh, the town to make it um, more uh, receptible to her offer of a million if they agree to kill her former lover who has jilted her. So you have a setup um, where you have a middle class structure with a downward tendency and then the top level of the multimillionaire. And we'll look now at uh, one little scene from each of uh, the three acts. So in the first act, um, the millionaire Claire Tsaranasian arrives in the town, is addressed um, with very formal uh, formulas by uh, the Bürgermeister of the town as verehrte gnädige Frau. And uh, als Bürgermeister von Göln habe ich die Ehre, sie gnädige verehrte Frau and so on. Um, and she interrupts him, uh, addresses him as sie and with his title, uh, but not um, uh, with his name, but then immediately switches over to... Um, focus on her former lover, Alfred Ill, whom she addresses as Du, Alfred, and he uh, reciprocates with Clara, so doesn't use her um, new upper-class uh, francophone form of Claire, but uh, uses the old uh, Swiss-German form of, of Clara. Um, and um, addresses uh, the teacher with um, Herr Lehrer. So um, you have a, a trying to uh, recreate a former form of intimacy. And uh, so Claire asks um, him to nenne mich, wie du mich immer genannt hast. So um, she asks him to um, speak out aloud uh, names in front of the whole uh, city which had been used for their um, love uh, encounters. So he uh, repeats by saying, Mein Wildkätzchen, uh, then my... Uh, mein Zauberhexchen and she says and ich nannte dich mein schwarzer Panther um, and he says well I'm still that and she retorts with no Unsinn du bist fett geworden und grau und versoffen so immediately the intimacy um, turns into aggression by um revealing underneath uh, the uh, diminutive forms of the Kätzchen, Hexchen, um, and the animal images, uh, the reality of neglect and um, going down in life. And um, then the scene develops, the city um, starts getting used to the idea that uh, they could become rich again and um, adjusting so their attitude towards Alfred Ill. Um, and he observes the signs of um, uh, this development disturbed. Um, uh, he um, 
is addressed as Herr Il, uh, still by the teacher. Um, but he doesn't want um, this formality. He wants to cut through uh, the surface of uh, their uh, talk. So he dresses the group that has assembled there as ihr. So the second person plural. And that's an interesting form because um, ihr in modern German is normally only used as plural for the informal du. So you have singular du and plural ihr, and you have singular z as formal form and um, plural z also as formal. So here he is addressing the collective as the familiar collective, even though he is on Z terms with the single people in the uh, group. But um, it's impossible really to um, address somebody aggressively in the formal form of Z. And then, um, in a way, uh, it, it's like many um, plays, a self-conscious play with a form because he implores her uh, to make this into a comedia rather a tragedy. So a comedia ends normally with marriage while a tragedia ends with death. So he asks her to turn around um, by speaking about it, uh, the situation into the release of comedy. She doesn't relent and it comes to the showdown in the third act. So here we are at uh, shortly before the um, townspeople now murder Alfred Ill to get to the million promised to them by um, Claire. And uh, so he is asked to walk into the waiting crowd of the townspeople where he knows they will kill him. Um, first, it's the mayor addressing him, Erheben Sie sich, Alfred Ill, which is a formal language. It's the language of court. So a judge would address um, a convicted person. And then... Um, when he hesitates, uh, the policeman gets in and says, Steh auf, du Schwein. So, uh, insulting him, um, getting trying to get the same effect as the rise, but um, by uh, using the informal address. And um, he is actually reproached for that by the mayor, who says um, he had to, uh, has to um, uh, keep professional and not go into the informal thing. Uh, he apologizes, um, and then the same is uh, repeated with, Der Bürgermeister saying, kommen Sie, Alfred Ill, using Sie, full name, uh, to order him. And then Ill starts moving, but not fast enough. Um, so he repeats, gehen Sie in die Gasse. Uh, no name, but still the Sie. And then just two words to end the whole thing before he's killed. The policeman saying just los, geh. Geh being the second person um, imperative, second person singular imperative. And that's uh, the end of the life of um, Alfred Ill. Uh, I could go on uh, ex exploring how this uh, narrowing down mirrors really uh, this 
dead end for um, Alfred Ill, but um, I um, want to leave uh, the analysis or also to relate this to comedy and tragedy to you and would encourage you to try doing this with your students. I would also be curious to hear your suggestions how to deal uh, with translating this dialogue in English. But that is the topic for another lecture. Thank you for listening.